There's a shop in the UK called BM Home Stores and or B and M Home Stores, and they're quite interesting because they sell sort of general sort of home stuff, and some of it's quite trashy and kind of nice. Really, it's a, it's like an upmarket sort of poundland. And one of the things they sell all year round is LED lights. At Christmas, they sell the bulk sets of uh, the Christmas lights, and in summer, they sell the solar panel versions of the sort of outdoor lights. And they had a range of sets that started from a set of 60 solar powered lights, and then they had 100, and then 200, and then they had this huge 480 LED set. And interestingly, it said in the box that it, uh, they, they'd kind of copied the text across because it just said, one double A rechargeable cell, and I thought, oh, that's going to push you a wee bit. And usually with these, uh, they have the standard sort of bare, sort of the bluish coloured polycrystalline silicon strips of the solar panel under the sort of resin. But this one has the amorphous silicon panel where it's actually a sort of silicon material deposited on glass, which I kind of like because uh, it's quite robust uh, and it's a cheap way of making solar panels as well. And normally, um, for the different size of sets, they might perhaps have a different size inductor inside on the same circuit uh, to push more current out to these from the single AA rechargeable cell. And the sections of the silicon cell would normally be bigger. But in this one, uh, when I opened it up, uh, I found that inside uh, is actually three AA cells. Now, normally I would expect three AA cells will charge up to a peak voltage of about 4.5 volts, the nickel metal hydride cells and their running voltage will be around about 3.2 volts, which is actually enough, theoretically, to drive a modest string of parallel LEDs directly with nothing more than a resistor, if that. But in this case, uh, they've gone much further than that. Uh, the site of an inductor here is a start. Oh, I should show you these lit first. They're not too shabby. They're not mega bright, but they're, they're I mean, they're cold white, which I, yeah, you know, guys, you guys know what I think about cold white. I prefer warm white in many applications, but you know, they light a modest brightness and they've got the other mode of flashing on and off, which is common to the other sets of lights too. However, uh, the circuitry is just a little bit weird because it's almost as if they've taken very capable circuitry and then modified it to uh, dumb it down a bit to make it do the sort of the simpler effect of just flashing the LEDs. Because when I take this little circuit board out here, and I really wasn't expecting much in the back. I was expecting maybe a little surface mount 8-pin chip, maybe a little uh, blob chip on board. Nope, this, uh, this screw's not coming out. Ah, there we go. And instead, we do have an 8-pin chip, an anonymous 8-pin chip, aren't they? Always anonymous. But then we've got the boost circuit with a transistor here, and then we've got a full H-bridge driver, and then another two transistors. Now, I've not actually spend enough time assessing what this uh, this is doing up here. Could that be the light sensing? That may actually be the light sensing. Yeah, I should have. I think that is the light sensing. Yeah, it comes from solar panels. So that is the light sensing circuitry, suggesting that this isn't the usual uh, little 8-pin chip found in these devices. It's probably just a little custom program microcontroller. And uh, when the power comes in from the batteries, uh, it's also worth noting that the solar panel, uh, although its colour code of its wires, red and black, is reversed, it is the correct polarity. I mean, red is actually negative coming from the solar panel and the black is the positive. It's, I'm not sure why they've, they've done that. It's just a little manufacturing error, perhaps. However, uh, when I put the meter across this and pointed at some light, it was fine. Uh, although, you know, it, it was uh, the red was the negative, but it was still connected to uh, the uh, negative terminal here. And the circuitry, the positive comes in, uh, goes through the switch and comes back to feed the chip and also that end of the inductor here. And then the other side, the inductor, gets switched by this transistor here and then rectified by a diode. And there's a little capacitor too, and that prov provides a sort of modest DC supply that it can work on for driving the LEDs. The chip appears to be powered directly from the, the batteries, though. Uh, the voltage, I say, it's kind of boosted up. I'm not sure why they're doing that. I guess it's to allow for the fact that it is an H-bridge, or maybe it is designed to operate with a single cell in some way in some applications, or or run larger strings of LEDs with uh, more in series. But um, 
It's got the H-bridge that drives the LEDs, and that means that when these are turned on, uh, although they only have two modes, static and flashing, they're actually wired in inverse parallel all the way along. So they're, even at static, there's a bit of a flicker off them because um, they are alternating. Half of them are lit at any one time. And I wonder if this is to do, uh, as I've mentioned in the past, with maybe trying to reduce the risk of electrolytic corrosion by putting AC across the back of the LEDs as opposed to the, the DC you'd normally get. Because um, when one LED is lit, it'll have three volts across it, and then when it's not lit and the one next to it is lit, the, when the polarity is reversed, the LEDs in the other circuit will cap that to three volts as well. So you'll basically get three volts uh, positive and negative, and then negative positive, and that may limit uh, the electrolytic corrosion. I still to put this to the test. But um, that's the only reason I can think they've really got such a complicated circuit arrangement. This just seems so overly complicated. I, I was kind of expecting pretty much one or two transistors and a couple of resistors, but instead it's a lot more. So um, yeah, I'm not sure why they've done that, but it's kind of intriguing uh, that they've basically used this chip to emulate the, the traditional chip, but with so much more extra circuitry. Very odd, but uh, definitely quite intriguing. I'm going to have a wee play with that, uh, and I'm going to test these LEDs or, or another set with the polarity swapping to see uh, if they do uh, if they are protected to a degree from the effects of the quite uh, bad corrosion you get with these LEDs when water wicks up the back of the heat shrink sleeving into them and it's just DC and it just uh, goes all brown inside and makes the metal corrode through, uh, that's something that will be worth testing.